Men of God. Men of God. It's time to rise up. Take your place in this race. There's no time to waste because you've been called to so much more. More than what the devil bargained for and much more than what your mother and father dreamt of the day you were born that was all mapped out for us before the foundations of the earth. Like blueprints tattooed on God's palms as true as a blue blood flowing through our king's veins and our veins for that fact because the good news was transfused into our old selves, yes, making sir. us brand new and transformed. Yes. Even though that old dead man still knocks on our door trying to make this sacred temple into a haunted house. But we know what that's all about. Just another tactic the enemy uses like black magic to distract us and detract us from our divinely crafted assignment Papa God set up for us to do while on this planet. Like one who sculpts masterpieces out of granite. Like when Michelangelo tediously called the angel from a stone, you see, he just didn't see a giant rock that needed to be formed into an angel. He saw an angel that needed freedom from that giant rock. Amen. And sometimes our sights become our own stumbling blocks. But if we have the same angelic point of view, then it'll be plain to see that we're not just called to raise up a generation of churchgoers. We're chosen to raise up an army. Through the strength of the Spirit resting on me and you, like artisans and craftsmen, anointed to build God's tabernacle, using our individual gifts and strengths that make us real men. Amen. And that's simply the fact that we have an Adam's apple. That's right. But do you sense the urgency that the body of Christ is somewhat of in a state of emergency for men to awaken, create, to set up a standard and not escape and deflate? But in the overflowing plane of responsibility, killing our rest and creativity. Because when the going gets tough, that's when the tough gets going. That's exactly when the blacksmith turns the heat up so we can emerge from the flames golden. Purified as a weapon in the mighty hands of a warrior. Because when we as men stand when the son of man who will what can never destroy us. And yes, we're a generation of kings. But we don't represent the kings of the earth, but rather we reflect the king of the universe who serves rather than being served. Bowing low when with his own two hands we observe him, molding a bunch of illiterate fishermen into radical revolutionaries who change the course of history and transpose a song of humanity that hummed grave tunes of misery into a rejuvenated, hope-filled legacy that strums the strings of heaven's symphonies, sickening the heart of Satan because he sees this fire kindled and composed by a choir of men confident in their identity that they are the remedy for a lost and infected world so many carbon copies pretend to be. Amen. But being a man, is not limited to being a hairy-chested, aggressive, opinionated, poker-playing, crotch-grabbing, beer-guzzling sports fan. I'm sorry, but a man is someone who can build bridges between generations and nations when the black flames of injustice and sin have burnt and scorched them. Being a man is someone who can bend his will and pride like iron bars of instruction God uses for structure for what he wants to build inside. A, ge a greenhouse for kingdom principles to bear fruit and thrive. A man is one fully filled and led by the Spirit of God, birthed from the travailing cries of messianic desires for us to occupy offices of authenticity, to rule and reign with divine authority like a lion, serving with the lamb's meekness and humility. You see, this is a real you and me, called to be more than what we ourselves admire, called to come up way higher. We are handcrafted, knit together by his spirit in the darkness of mystery. So we may craft with our own two hands, fleshing out those plans that are founded intimately, knowing Him. You guys come up here this weekend to worship God or what?